Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, feels like quite a while that uh, I haven't seen you guys. Uh, it's in the most ironic part, it's only been a week. Uh, last week I came down with whatever my son had and I was just completely out of it all weekend. I was in bed, I was sick. And you can hear by my voice, I'm still kind of, I'm all over the place. Uh, if you were in the live webinar this whole week, I've been coughing up a storm. So these damn kids, I knew having kids one day was going to bite me in the ass and my son got me sick for like a week and hopefully I'll be a hundred percent by Monday, but again, just kind of fighting through it. So thank you very much for everybody to kind of putting up with my coughing and all that good stuff. But again, such is life. Uh, quick announcement. Um, I've been demonstrating kind of the power of the pivot. Uh, for the last six years in real time on social media. Um, I, I, think, I think by now, uh, if you haven't figured out uh, the, the, the most aggressive part of what our strategy provides and actually our process provides, um, you're really not looking. Okay, uh, these are very, very unique, very specific uh, areas of interest in the market that uh, we found an incredible arbitrage about and we've been kind of duplicating over and over again. And I, I really been demonstrating the power of the pivot for the last six years in real time. It has to be in real time uh, or else what's the point, right? It's all hindsight stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I made a decision. Um, it just takes a lot out of me. For, for all you guys who know, I've been, you know, I speak seven hours a day in the live webinar. Uh, it's all about trader development. It's all about having one-on-one -on -one personal relationships with everybody uh, in the live webinar. Everybody has my phone number. Uh, we text, we email, we speak all the time. And it takes a lot out of me. So, uh, it's it's kind of it's really wearing down on me to show the power of the pivot live on social media at the same time uh, working with everybody trading it, it's just so much um, so I, I kind of made a conscious decision that I am going to kind of scale back from tweeting these things uh, on social media platforms in real time only just to kind of grab a little bit of sanity back it's just taking way too much uh, it takes too much effort. Uh, to trade this that everything in real time so uh going forward uh, especially on, the, on on our twitter platform and our stock twitch platform um i will be only showing these things on delay okay um you know i think six years is a pretty good sample size uh if you want to continue uh to see this uh it's only 40 bucks a month you could jump on the private twitter feed it's 40 bucks a month you, i'm sure you guys spend a lot more of that uh, on scanners and all that other stuff uh it's 40 bucks a month and with it, you, you get uh, not only the live Twitter feed, you get the nightly video, basically what you're seeing now. If you enjoy this, it gives you a lot of good value. You get the nightly video with all the good uh, option flow and the watch list for the next day. Uh, but all, you also get the four-hour PS60 workshop, which is breaking down exactly what we do. So it's tremendous value. It's only 40 bucks a month. Uh, and if you trade beta, again, that's the place to go. If not, guys, again, enjoy. Uh, the delayed, um, enjoy the delayed uh, pivots uh, on social media platforms. So let's kind of, I just want to get that out of the way. So going forward, that's kind of where we are. Um, so let's talk about the market, right? Talk about the market. So we've had this really, really good run. Call it what you want, bear market rally, uh, V-shape recovery, whatever you want, right? Whatever you want to call this, the scoreboard is the scoreboard. And we've had this really aggressive uh, market run for the last probably about five, six weeks, okay? Uh, ever since we kind of made these lows uh, all the way back in December, big, big run. And now the question was, well, can we get to the 200-day moving average? When we get to the 200-day moving average, what's going to happen? Who's gonna seize control of the 200-day moving average? And what we saw this week was really good aggressive pivots, okay? Uh, both long and short, but, but taking the trading aspect aside and only looking at it from the macro point of view, the market accomplished what the market needed to accomplish, okay? Um, we touched, touched, I wanna use the word touched. We touched the 200-day moving average, okay, in the NASDAQ 100, and for the purpose of the stocks that I trade, uh, I use my barometer for strength and weakness in the NASDAQ 100, because again, I, I trade primarily beta, you know, the Amazons of the world, the Teslas, the Netflixes, so forth and so on. So, we did the 200-day moving average, 
And if you notice, and we started talking about this by Wednesday, okay, if you notice every single time we hit this area, right, we fade it, hit this area, fade it, hit this area, fade it, hit this area, we fade it. And it started to play out that way. So once we got into Thursday's session, we had that pretty aggressive sell-off. Um, my, you know, the commentary that I give in the live webinar, again, for the whole trader development is put you on the right track of the highest probability next case scenario. So I know a lot of you guys uh, came in short uh, at, via puts, uh, uh, Amazon, Boeing, uh, NVIDIA, stuff like that. So there was a nice gap down on Monday, okay, uh, on, on Friday. What I really, the, the bigger question was, were we going to have a day two meltdown? Because remember, uh, the previous day, the Dow went down like 300 points. Uh, things looked really, really weak. You had Amazon breaking down, couldn't rally. Netflix breaking down, couldn't rally. All these stocks that had that major, major move, they couldn't rally. And the question was, well, is this scenario, okay, is this scenario going to start playing out like this? And I, I really thought Friday was a very, very important day, okay? Uh, we could have easily, okay, the bulls could have easily laid down, played dead, we would have closed below, right? We would have closed below this demand zone right here. And then you, you would have had your train of thought going into Monday as, well, here we go again. We did exactly the same thing. Your eyes don't lie, right? Rejected sell-off, rejected sell-off, rejected sell-off, rejected sell-off, not so fast. This time around, it was different, okay? This time around, uh, the bulls did make a stand, okay? Uh, they made a stand. They held the 100-day moving average, which was very, very important. So if you look at the 60-minute view, again, they could have easily rolled down and died. We had literally five candles of, of distribution to paint a picture what was going to happen next. Okay, It wasn't like a 30-minute you know, kind of pause and say, well, let's flip a coin. What's going to happen? If you look at the bottom of this channel, we literally had, and again, you can see this faint orange line. This represented the 100-day moving average, both correlated on the 60-minute and on the daily chart. And all the bears needed to do, okay, to continue, you know, continue to this, this, this visual pattern of, again, rejection, sell-off, rejection, sell-off, rejection, sell-off, rejection, starting the sell-off. All they needed to do was confirm these four or five candles. We would have closed at the low of the day, and we would have been having a conversation. Well, if we close below 64, we're going to go start going all the way down. The greatest part about what they did was in this whole V-shaped recovery, um, the best thing the bulls did was yesterday. It was the most important day of yesterday. They held the bottom. They held the bottom of the range, both on the 60 and the 100-day moving average. And you could really see the really good aggressive move on the NASDAQ 100 towards the end of the day. And it wasn't a fluke. Okay, I say this all the time. You know, technical analysis is... It, it, you know, a lot of you guys, especially new traders, you're so emotional, okay, on social media, and you you, you get so emotional about your positions. A guy, a guy like me, you know, I've been trading almost 20 years. I, I don't care which way the wind blows, bull, bear, zebra, giraffe, it doesn't make a difference to me. As long as there is a bias, and I collect data on that bias, and it confirms, I'm good with that. I think a lot. I think I can speak to, uh, speak for a lot of professional traders who've been doing this for a long time. They feel exactly the same way. We don't get all caught up with. Well, Tesla needs to raise more money. Oh, Tesla has three wheels. Tesla has no steel. We don't care. Okay, we don't care. Where the sentiment goes, where the confirmation goes, that's where we go. So the, the word technical analysis, if you really think about it, right, if you really think about the concept of technical analysis, it, it's, not, it's not something for debate, okay? It's pretty cut and dry. If you're trading for six months, a year, two years, maybe it's more of a broader stroke conversation for you. But if you're trading for many, many years, it's pretty cut and dry, okay? I, I think the word and the term technical analysis, for some reason, has got lost in translation. There's a fine line, okay, where buyers will clean up sellers or sellers will clean up buyers, okay? There's no room for interpretation. The person that is wrong, okay, is reading the chart the wrong way, okay? Technical analysis is pretty clean. Again, sometimes we say this, or, you know, sometimes we say this, charts don't lie, but sometimes they won't tell you the truth. They won't expand or contract immediately, but generally the stock market really trends on very boring data that professional traders collect. So if you're a new trader and you're trying to debate another human being that's on the other side of your trade and the other side of your opinion uh, about what do you think is going to happen, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your breath, you're burning mental equity. Nobody cares what you think. 
right? That's the beautiful part about it is nobody cares what you think, right? It's like if you if I'm looking at a pivot on Tesla and I say to myself, man, there's four candles here. If it confirms to the upside and you're turning around telling me that, that Tesla's a fraud, it's going to zero, you're wasting your time, okay? You're wasting time. And oh, by the way, you're probably going to be wrong on the, on, on the other side of the pivot. So technical analysis is pretty concrete. There's no room for interpretation. For all you new traders, just understand that. Nobody needs to have a conversation which way you think a stock's going to go. Buyers are either going to clean up sellers or sellers are going to clean up buyers, and that directional bias will continue. So before you start jumping on somebody's uh, opinion, just really look at the chart. Stand back and look at the chart. And I'm not, I'm not saying this uh, to be an aggressive in any way, okay? I'm just trying to save you burning a lot of mental equity, okay? The stock market, again, I've said this repeatedly, the stock market doesn't care what we think, okay? I am the king of the idiots, okay? My opinion in the stock market doesn't matter, okay? It's all about waiting for that green light, waiting for that confirmation. And again, kind of going back to Friday's session, we had all the intentions. I mean, right around like one, two o'clock, I kept on saying to myself, well, I still want to give the bears the benefit of the doubt. I still want to give the bears the benefit of the doubt. And again, I could be wrong 100% of the time, right, with my, with my thought process. As long as I'm not wrong 100% of the time with my trading, I'm okay with that. And kudos to the bulls, you know, really, really kudos to the bulls. So going into Monday's session, we have a pretty clean line of, um, uh, of approach, okay, kind of a, a, an approach, and we want to use uh, those areas to kind of formulate an opinion going forward. So macro-wise, here's kind of what we're looking at for Monday's session. I really think, and you can see here the rising Bollinger Band right here, right? Um, 169 is going to be, I, I think, an important level, at least of a, an important jump-off level for the bulls. I think the bulls need to reclaim this 140, uh, 169 on the queues and then slowly but surely start reclaiming. Again, I think everything will be, I think we'll be out of the woods, at least short term. If we can close above 6970, uh, that's the linear regression line. But we definitely need, if you're on the bullish case, you definitely need to close and reclaim this 169 level on the queues. To the downside, again, you, you, you could pretty see it pretty clean. You had one, two, three, four, five candles in a row, right? Five candles in a row. And the low of this candle was roughly 166.50, right? That, again, there is no room for interpretation. 169, 166.50. One of them has to build, okay? Everything else in between is noise. Everything, everything in between on the macro cycle is your process. Is it better than somebody else's on the other side of your trade? From the point of macro conversation, 169 to the upside, 166.50 uh, to the downside. Um, again, flat indexes pretty much throughout the week. Uh, NASDAQ gained a half of a percent. Uh, the Dow added two tenths of a percent. And S&P was flat, okay? Doesn't make a difference. Didn't make a really big case one way or another. Uh, again, I say this all the time, especially in new traders, the scoreboard shouldn't define uh, your ability to make money or lose money, okay? It's your individual process via, again, da -da -da, collection of data that is going to be the, 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 the key ingredient whether you make money or lose money. Again, it doesn't make a difference what you trade. You can trade Bitcoin, you can trade small caps, mid caps, whatever the hell you want, okay? It doesn't make a difference your ability to grasp inf information better than this person on the other side of the trade is going to be the ultimate uh, judge, jury, and executioner if you're going to make money or not. So the index is this week completely flat. Um, I thought this action this week was really good. Okay, It was really, really good. Not only was I trading beta this week, I found myself trading stocks like, like UP, like UPWK, like crazy stocks like this. I mean, like like literally, literally crazy stocks like this, like UPWK. And I even traded PYX this week, like these really crazy stocks that I would never, never trade. Uh, but they were actually performing very, very well. And, you know, sometimes when you have an open, just an example, like last Thursday, like Thursday, for example, we had an open that all my general focus areas like Tesla, Netflix and stuff like that, were kind of sitting in the middle of the ranges. They weren't at the bottom, they weren't at the top, they were kind of in the middle. And I had to really make a decision of what the hell I wanted to trade. And I found myself on Thursday, for example, trading like Twitter, right? Trading like Chipotle of all things. So I traded Twitter to the downside, Chipotle to the upside. And sometimes, you know, when you are a, a trader and your stocks are not focused or not being spotlighted, you have two choices. You can either trade second and third tier 
names. And again, for me, Twitter and Chipotle are second, third tier na names because I usually don't trade them. Or you can sit it out. Again, I, I think the biggest difference between sitting on your hands and kind of making um, a, a, a conscious decision to not trade something when it's not you know in your sweet spot are two different things. Again, I, I think sitting on your hands for the most part is a very passive defensive way. Okay, it's basically screaming out lack of process. But if you're a professional trader and you don't see something that you love, that's something that you feel comfortable with, I think kind of moving yourself to the sidelines is a very, very mature thing. So again, as you get older and, 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 and more mature in this game, you'll start to separate the two. So it's something that, again, screen time will always uh, be your friend and kind of guide you which way you want to go. But uh, I thought this, this week was uh, very, very solid. Uh, Friday, which was very, kind of ironic, Friday's session, again, Friday, I was so worn out. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you watch these videos over and over again, you kind of see like by Friday, uh, because I speak so much throughout the day and, and all that good stuff, I put so much effort into what we do in, the, in this platform. This is why we have such an incredible platform um, that I'm just completely burnt out by Friday. And oh, by the way, I was sick. So Friday, uh, I traded Tesla. I caught Tesla in the short side. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. And I learned my very valuable lesson, okay? For all you guys who don't who know this phrase, and th this phrase usually is associated with uh, small caps, okay? And it's short sale restriction, right? SSR. When you hear a stock that's, that's on SSR, uh, what basically means is the stock was da is down like 10%, right? 10% on the day. And you can't hit bids. You can't hit bids anymore, okay? You need an uptick. Uh, you need an uptick to... Uh, to get short. Okay, and the problem with an uptick, right, after they clean up a seller, the problem with the uptick is once you get an aggressive buyer, it can really, really squeeze you out. Okay, so FireEye, you know, FireEye, and again, it wasn't financial, there was no financial implications here whatsoever, but FireEye was on SSR for 24 hours. And, you know, the $16 area here, okay, uh, was the bottom of the range. And the one thing that, uh, you know, you, you keep on getting more information as you get older and you kind of figure out where you want to play and what part of the playground you want to play. Do you want to play in the sandbox and the swings and the slide? I don't want to play anymore with these stupid SSRs. Okay. It's, it's such a, an, an incredibly aggressively mentally burning trade and you get absolutely nowhere. Okay. Um, and, and it's, and uh, for the exception of the pattern day trading rule that I literally learned what the hell that was like four years ago, five years ago, Okay, SSR could be the dumbest rule possible. So, in other words, it's okay to buy a stock of four hundred percent, but if a stock is down ten percent, you can't hit bids. Explain the rationale on that. It just doesn't make sense. But again, as we know, there's a lot of rules in trading that don't make sense. Okay, we get that. We play by the rules. We you know take the hand that's dealt to us, and it's our choice either to trade it or not to trade. Again, it's kind of going back to. The conversation that I had a few minutes ago. So I, I, I learned a very important lesson. Um, I shorted this F F E Y E on Friday, right? I shorted it on Friday. It goes down like 20 cents, right? And they just hold it up. They hold it up. They hold it up. They hold it up. They hold it up. I'm in the trade for like a half an hour, for whatever the hell it was, half an hour, 40 minutes. Goes down like 20 cents. There's no, you, there's no selling pressure. There's absolutely no selling pressure. And ultimately, I get stopped out even on the trade, and the stock does absolutely nothing. So uh, again, as we get more and more into this game, we figure out what we like, what we don't like. And I you know I, I don't think it's a big secret, especially a lot of you guys who trade stocks on the short side. So you kind of know this. This is kind of new to me because usually I don't have a lot of big cap stocks that are on SSR, a lot of beta names that are on SSR. So I really learned, um, just, it's nothing to do with financially, mentally, I really learned just to kind of leave these stocks alone until they get off of short sale restriction, leave them alone. More than important of losing money or as important of losing money in a trade, I think the lack of burning mental equity is a lot better. And oh, by the way, the fact that I was short FireEye, I missed a really, really strong trade on Amazon. So not only does it affect you financially kind of taking your attention away from something else, uh, but you are burning at mental equity. So again, kind of figure out where your sweet spot is no matter what you trade and try to avoid the things that are going to um, kind of derail you from the big picture. So uh, Friday was a, a pretty solid session. Again, I was sick. You can hear my voice. I'm still sick. Um, I traded FireEye. I broke even on it and I caught Tesla, which was fine. 
Uh, let's talk about the pivots. Uh, let's talk about the individual pivots. Um, Friday's session, uh, you know, if you guys have been following me for a while, you kind of know that Fridays since, again, and I can't really explain why, but Fridays since like last May have been really phenomenal trading sessions. I can't explain to you why, but they have been, okay? And they've been very, very aggressive and everything has been great and all that good stuff. Some reason Friday, they gave pretty good trades, but the problem with that was they were all spread apart. And by the time everything was said and done was it's like I completely lost interest and I was just so burnt out, I didn't care. Uh, but again, the greatest thing about these pivots are folks, I don't need to be in the trade with you. You don't need to be your friend. Nobody needs to hold your hand. These are organic vehicles then where supply gets confirmed, stocks will go higher. When demand gets confirmed, things are going to go lower. And the greatest part about it is you don't need anybody in this, these trades with you. Okay, This is why the whole alert service bullshit, excuse my French, that's what it is. But you know, again, you don't need a thousand people to buy your stock. You don't need to be the schmuck holding the bag. These are areas of organic order flow, institutional buying pressure when they get confirmed. Well, those algos that everybody hates, those are the reason why these things put up such big moves. So uh, Mattel, and again, unfortunately, I, well, not unfortunately, I was trading Tesla as Mattel was, um, uh, as, as Mattel was triggering. But Tesla, excuse me, Mattel, $15, if it can get above, can spike. Again, it was a pretty basic setup, um, pretty basic setup indeed. Uh, here's the $15 right here, you know, for $14.95. Uh, once a build above 15, you can see a move uh, to 16 bucks. Do a dollar move on a $15 stock is a lot, okay, is a lot. Um, yeah, Amazon, again, congratulations to you guys who caught Amazon. Uh, I know a lot of you guys were long puts uh, overnight. Uh, I think the stock closed around 16, 15. It opened up uh, in the 1580s. I know a lot of you guys did very, very well in this trade. And again, Here's a perfect example of FireEye, right? A FireEye, if it builds below support and finally get hit. Yeah, this was 20 cents, big F you to me. As Amazon opening range low below 14, uh, below uh, 15, uh, 1582 went down 10. So I missed the 10 point move in Amazon to get stopped out, break even 45 minutes later on, on FireEye. Again, sometimes it's the luck of the draw. Before you guys who took the trade, 1590 broke below. Uh, went down to like 1560s. I know Andrew, I think Andrew said he had his biggest day of the year. I think uh, so. Great job there. I know a lot of you guys caught this trade very, very well. Uh, good job there. Um, yeah, so here, here's here's the trade right here. Uh, Tesla very, very close to getting smashed. Needs to confirm a huge spot. Um, so here's the Tesla trade. Uh, here's the Tesla trade. 303 was uh, the previous day's low. 301 was macro. So what I did was I used the second entry, uh, again, for all you guys who are joining us on the in the live webinar uh, or on the Twitter feed. So basically what we do now, you can see this off uh, the workshop that you get part of your uh, membership. Uh, what I use now is second entry. So I let it go through 303. Okay, I let it go through 303. Um, I let it put in a new low, rally back once it broke that new low. That was, you know, that was the entry. And if you look at Tesla, Gave a pretty good move. It really did. It really gave a pretty good move here. So here was 303. Kind of here was 303 yesterday's low. Here was 301, the macro view. And once it broke, it went down to like 298 or so. Um, I got short in the 302s. 302s. Yeah, 302s. Um, the one thing that was crazy, I really thought that second move, and I wanted to reshort Tesla on that 299 pivot that never came. Okay. And the most amazing part about that was it kind of stopped in midair. And again, I, I know the, the cues got stronger and everything got stronger, but I really, really thought, and again, this is where thinking compared to reality, right? My reality versus the actual reality came into play. Again, I was wrong on the possible next move, but it didn't cost me any money. So very, very odd, but I definitely want to keep an eye on Tesla for next week. Um, you know, again, I, I want to see how it handles this 10-day moving average. If it gets kind of uh, if it gets rejected off that area, uh, but yeah, pretty good trade, uh, pretty good trade off the open there. Um, let me see here. Uh, Boeing again, not a big move on Boeing. Uh, Three ninety nine again. This is where the market. Uh, this is where the market um, uh, really didn't do anything. Uh, this is where the market kind of sitting back. So I said three ninety nine. If it could build below, it could get hit again. Really didn't get hit. Went down to like ninety seven and change. But again. Some cash flow is better than no cash flow. Again, good job for all you guys who caught that. 
uh, as well. And uh, again, here's my point. Uh, you know, here's here's where my point, guys. That um, you know, what I'm talking about trading, you know, trading and tweeting in real time. Uh, 2050, uh, 2050. I tweeted out do or die level. Again, I always tweet these levels uh, prior to the price action. Again, I want to demonstrate how aggressive uh, these pivots are. Uh, this was a really you know, nice move on, on overstock, uh, do or die 2050. I knew once it was going to build over that 2050, you started seeing uh, flow come in, option flow come in uh, into the name. I believe it was the June 20s uh, that, was, that was swept, I think, about a little less than 900 times. And overstock, you know, again, in a week tape, uh, good flow, you know, absolutely good flow. Here's the 20 pivot and stopped right into supply of 2111. Good job for all you guys who caught that as well. Um, Nvidia, no, Nvidia, Nvidia. Will caught. Um, yeah, MGNX uh, again wasn't a big move. I think it was like a 30, 40 cent move. Uh, MGNX, uh, I tweeted out and I said, hey, if this thing could go red to green, uh, it could go right. And when red to green, it went up about 40 cents or so, and then the market kind of hit it back again, removed from the supply zone. Again, note this wasn't a pivot. Uh, this was a bounce just off of rising support. The coolest thing about uh, the coolest thing about uh, these pivots are, and I and I, I say this all the time. Um, here, here's another trade here that ran up about a dollar or so towards the end of the day on Netflix. Um, but here's the coolest thing about uh, you know here's the coolest thing about um, these pivots. There's a guy in our room, and usually we don't have a lot of 19, 20 year olds. There's a guy in our room who's celebrating his 20th birthday. 20. Okay. Unfortunately, I forgot to um, I forgot to uh, check his ID at the door. But he hit five out of five trades. The kid is 20 years old. Okay, I, I would give up everything I have, every materialistic thing that I have in my life to become 20 years old. But the most important part is he's a 20-year-old kid, and on his birthday, hit five out of five trades on Friday. It had nothing to do with me. Okay, it had nothing to do with me. He embraced the process very, very quickly, and he keeps on applying it. Okay, and the greatest thing about trading pivots. Okay, once I'm dead, and hopefully it's not going to be anytime soon. But once I'm dead, okay, I could actually say I've actually contributed something that somebody else can use going forward. And the days that I don't feel like trading, if I'm on vacation, whatever the case may be, you don't need to sit on your hands. You don't need to shut down. You don't need to wait for me to kind of give you the green light. These are things that you can apply in your day-to-day -day life and make sure that you are trading on your time, not because the market's open, on your time. So I want to give a very happy birthday to Evan, who's 20 years old. Say it with me, 20 years old. I'm so jealous. Congratulations uh, on, your, uh, on your birthday, on your life. You have a great, bright future. You are going to be a stud in no matter what you do uh, in your life. And the most important thing is to have a level head and go forward. So for all you guys who are joining us uh, in the live webinar, uh, this week, again, it's phenomenal. We all talk about what's well, all about trader development. It's all about personal relationships and it's about longevity and education. For you guys who are joining us in the live feed, welcome aboard. Guys, have an awesome, awesome weekend. I wish you guys the best. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field on Monday. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.